Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Z Learning, brought to you by Riverbanks Zoo and Garden. My name is Milo, and today we are in for a very special snack time session with some of your favorite animal residents, our koalas. Here in just a second, we are going to head behind the scenes into Koala Knockabout for a very up close and personal view with some of my favorite Riverbanks residents. But good morning, everybody. Diana, all the way from Tampa. Nice to see you tuning in this morning. Bonnie, Ven, Elsie, nice to see you. Stacy for tuning in as well. Caitlin, nice to see all of you. Alejandro as well. Good morning, happy Monday. We are kicking off the week strong. Like I said, with some of my favorite animal residents here at Riverbanks. It is so great to see all of you. Dempsey and Fisher, thanks for tuning in. Ella, nice to see you as well. Now today, like I said, we are going in for a snack time sessions. Yay, koalas is right, Ashley. They are some of my all times favorites. Rebecca, good morning. Good morning, Stevie. Nice to see you all as well. Now today, we are going to be joined by a friend of mine, Alexa. She's actually one of our mammal keepers who specifically cares for our koalas and a whole lot of other animals. But today she's going to join us in Koala Knockabout for that feeding session. We couldn't do it without her. So without further ado, I think we should start to make our way over there. Oh, but wait, hold on. I almost forgot. Silly me. Today I went ahead and wore my Riverbanks South Carolina Strong shirt because of course we are South Carolina strong. It's one of my new favorite shirts, but more importantly, all of you who've been asking about those youth sizes for children, they are in. Go to our online gift shop. In fact, we'll throw up our link right here with the help from our other communication center staff members with Jordan and Sam's help. But we wanna go ahead and give you that link to that online store because we have those youth sizes. So you can have this exact same shirt that I am wearing today that our koalas are gonna see this morning. And now we have those new sizes. So they come in adult sizes, of course, just like I'm wearing, and then sizes for your kiddos at home too. So we know we've gotten lots of different email requests, comments coming in, and we wanted to let you know. Carolyn, thanks for tuning in from the Jersey Shore. Wow, it is so great to see everybody from South Carolina, South Carolina Strong, and from all over the states too. Now, let's go ahead and start making our way back there. I'm gonna go ahead, pull up my mask, get everything all prepped and ready since we're gonna be spending some time with Alexa. It's a beautiful sun sunny morning here in South Carolina, but we are going to be heading behind the scenes into our building where we're gonna be inside for a good chunk of the time. But let me go ahead and turn around this camera and give a knock on the door and see if Alexa's in. Oh, perfect timing. Good morning. Nice to see you, Alexa. Here, let me go ahead and dip in our foot bath real quick and kind of spin around. Thanks so much. Now, we are so excited. We've been back here with koalas before. It was with Catherine, actually, and we specifically met Cody. Now, this morning, we might say hey to Cody, but we are doing routine with you. In fact, right now is feeding time, isn't it? It's feeding time. We're going to be getting ready um, for Lottie to go outside. So we try and rotate our koalas out onto habitat as much as possible so that they can get sunlight and they can bask in the sun and really enjoy themselves. But every day we give them new eucalyptus sprouts. So you guys are going to come along with me and I'm going to show you how we pick that out. Perfect. So we have the eucalyptus. Let's go ahead. We're going to follow you. Lead the way. Okay. Now, oh, it's, it's labeled. We're all good. It's eucalyptus refrigerator right there. <laughs> We're not lost at all. Let's label our things here. <laughs> Vim Hybrid, and Rudis for Lottie today. Wow. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the fridge, and you can take a look and see what the massive refrigerator is. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and peek on in. We'll go in before Alexa here quick. It's kind of a tight space, so we'll do a quick little tour. Look at all this fresh eucalyptus. It looks delicious if you're a koala, I have to say. <laughs> now we'll stand back here. Alexa's actually going to head on in and kind of stock up. I wanted to give you that closer peek quick. Now everything is labeled, correct? So you have all the yes. bushels that are all wrapped around so you know which one's which. Absolutely, so I cheated a little and came in just to make sure I knew where everything was <laughs> for you guys. But sometimes we do have to hunt, but we do label off of all of our eucalyptus and we make sure we feed our oldest out first. We do also have two different kinds of eucalyptus, sure. um, some from Arizona and then some from Florida. Wow. So we typically feed out two Florida bundles. So this is a Florida bundle, this is a propinqua. And Look this is actually one of Lottie's absolute favorites. So Ooh. we like to try and cater to 
to our kids when we can. Lucky Lottie. Okay, so if you missed that, Alexa just mentioned it came all the way from Florida. This bushel did. This bushel came from Florida. But we also get bushels from Arizona as well. We don't grow them right here in South Carolina. We do have our own eucalyptus greenhouse, but it doesn't stock up nearly as much as our koalas are eating on a daily basis. So all of you who've been asking during this kind of pandemic or temporary closure, have we been able to feed the animals? We've still been able to get shipments on a regular basis. In fact, Alexa, do they come twice a week? Is that what it is? They come twice a week. In fact, we will be getting a big shipment tomorrow. Tomorrow's the big shipment day. Well, I'm glad we're not in the way of all of that action. <laughs> yes. Now, Alexa's just grabbing off that tag because, of course, Lottie doesn't want to eat that. <laughs> no, she doesn't. And then we also get a lot of questions about our koalas, why we feed them in these little PVC bases. Yeah. Our koalas really don't know how to eat eucalyptus in any other way. And this really just sure. sort of resembles more of a tree-like setting that they would normally be sure. in. So we go ahead and put them in here. There's water in them so the eucalyptus stays nice and fresh. And then she can go ahead and just pick through whatever she wants to eat from it. And that's just the easiest way for us to feed them. That makes perfect sense. So instead of, of course, like a dinner plate like you all might be used to at home, we give it to them like they would naturally have it in big bushels growing up in the trees. And they actually have little connectors. We'll watch Alexa put them up, but they actually hang at koala height instead of being on the ground. So we'll keep them arboreal so that way they're up in the trees. Absolutely. So I'm going to go ahead and grab her other two bushels and then we'll go ahead and pop them outside. Perfect. So all three of these then are for just Lottie. Just for Lottie. Okay. So they go through a whole lot of eucalyptus. In fact, those of you who are Riverbanks regulars, you know that koalas are our hands down, no questions asked, most expensive residents to feed here at Riverbank Zoo and Garden. Now, the reason why they are oh so expensive is, like I said, and like Alexa was explaining, we don't grow these here in the state of South Carolina. There's a lot of varieties that are maybe a little too tropical for our state even, which means that all of that shipment, transport, the big boxes they come into, it costs a whole lot of money, but we wouldn't do anything but top-notch care for our animal residents, and that goes even down to the fresh leaves that they're eating. You can see all the water dripping off. They were sitting in those big vases. That is a big old bushel. <laughs> yeah, so this is actually one of our Arizona bushels, so you can okay. see that they are a little bit different. Yeah. Um, it's just a different species, and so we do like to feed them three different species every day, and we also try not to repeat species, so we make sure that we don't feed two pro pink ones, even though she really loves the pro pink ones, we try not to feed them twice in a row because just like everybody else, just like you guys at home, variety is the spice of life and we like to mix it up for them. Absolutely. Not only the spice of life, but if you think a koala out in the wild wouldn't spend its entire life in just one tree variety. It would be living in a big grove, a big forest, and it would be having lots of different varieties. I'm seeing a lot of questions come in though. Sarah was wondering how sharp are their teeth? Other people were wondering, do they have teeth? Jax was wondering that. Alexa, they have teeth. They absolutely <laughs> They have definitely teeth. do. They, um, you know, need to defend themselves as well. They also have very, very long claws, um, and they have very specialized teeth that help them really grind down that eucalyptus. But they're very powerful, and they can actually bite through welding gloves. So Woo! Very, very powerful bites. Um, so you really don't want to mess with a koala if you ever find a <laughs> Um So we have all three bundles ready here for Lottie. I'm just going to go ahead and mist it down with some water. We like to sure. do that just because... They don't really get their water sources from anything but the eucalyptus. So we like Absolutely. to give them just a little bit of extra water to make sure that they're staying hydrated um, and have everything that they need. That is such a good point. So Alexa's going to go ahead and kind of mist down everything, give it a quick little rinse over to add that moisture to them. Because imagine if you were a koala hanging up in the trees of Australia, it is dangerous for you. That's where the predators hang out are on the ground for you to go down and have a, a drink of water, let's say, by a water source. So their main source of water just comes from their food that they eat. I love it. That was a simple spray. Yeah. All right. Looks so beautiful. we're going to go ahead. Um, it's a little bit of a tedious process. We're just going to take these out one by one, and I'll show you guys our outdoor habitat. I'm sure some of you guys have seen it. Absolutely. But we're going to set it up for Lottie, and, um, and then we'll go ahead and bring Perfect. it Perfect. All right. So we'll follow you on in. So she knows she grabbed those big PVC vases. Now, we are behind the scenes, so you might see some bedrooms over on the left as we kind of trail behind. Now, we do have three koalas here. I know this that a few people have been asking, but our communications team has been typing in those answers, answering them live for y'all. So hopefully you know already. But we have Lottie, Charlotte, and Cody, all three of our koalas. And all Alexa's doing is she actually is placing them in a system kind of like this one right here, actually. There's a little bolt that it is actually into these logs that we've planted in the ground to kind of recreate this kind of climbing structure that they hang out on. And then, of course, 
the little horseshoe to kind of hold it in place. And that looks perfect. Alexa, that looks awesome. It looks just like a eucalyptus tree. So one checked off. Okay, so we'll kind of hang out here. If you want to grab the other ones, we're going to kind of give a peek. So those of you who are just joining in, we are live inside of one of our koala habitats. Now, if you've been to Riverbanks before, you know we have three different koala areas or habitats, homes, we could say, that you can come publicly see. One is outside where we are right now, and then our two other indoor ones, which we're kind of peeking at right now. So one for each of our koalas, of course, and then with all those behind the scenes bedrooms, of course, if we have any inclement weather, or like Alexa said, we actually rotate our koalas. That way they have a new space that they're seeing all the day long, which encourages them to scent mark, explore and be active even though a lot of you are probably used to seeing them sleeping they are active okay alexa that's two that looks awesome okay i want to get a closer look at all these y'all keep sending in these amazing questions ashlyn age 10 was wondering what other foods do they eat and do they eat any other things besides plants that's the fascinating thing about koalas they just eat eucalyptus that is their specialty diet they are highly adapted they have a very specialized digestive system that can break down those eucalyptus leaves and that's their favorite snack and their only snack they just like to eat different varieties of it turn it around real quick alexa brought in the last bushel we spread them all out <laughs> we're gonna encourage lottie to move around today absolutely lottie is one of our older females so we do like to encourage her to move as at her own pace and however she wants to move from bushel to bushel she doesn't always do that, but we will rotate her bundles throughout the day just to make sure that she is eating if she does want to stay in one spot. Such a good point. Okay, now when you say older individual, how old is Lottie? Lottie's 18 years old, so yep. by okay. koala standards, that's pretty old. Typically, yeah. they live to be around 12 or so, so she's doing really, really good. And of course, with all of our wonderful vet staff here, she's got the best care possible. Absolutely. Now, those of you who are familiar with Lottie, you would know too. Not only is she an older lady, but she is a very well-versed mother. A shout out to Mother's Day and all of our so wild funny. mothers <laughs> out there, including Ms. Lottie. Not only is she a great mom, but she's also a grandmother and a great grandmother to put that kind of into perspective. But Alexa, let's go ahead and follow you back out because we got all of our food out here, but we are missing something and that is Lottie herself. <laughs> Now, like we were just talking about while you were grabbing all the eucalyptus, we have a couple different koala areas and Lottie's actually inside right now in this habitat. So we're gonna follow Alexa in. Oh, it's nice and quiet in here. Oh, she was waiting for us though. Look at her, she's hanging out right here. Good morning, Lottie. So I had already pulled her bundles for you guys so she doesn't have any bundles in here right now. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how we move our koalas. I get asked all the time, if they're cuddly, if they're sweet, oh, yeah. if they like to be touched. Oh yeah, Sarah um, Grace was just commenting in, do the keepers hold the koalas? Sarah Grace, you're on it. We're uh, gonna answer that question for so you. <laughs> we hold them in a very specialized way and I will show you guys that and walk through it. Lottie is a champ, she's been here for a long time so she knows the drill. Um, but it's just typically a way for us to move them from habitat to a habitat if we need sure. to. Um, also for medical procedures, if we need to pick them up and have our vets touch them, we do like them to be prepared for touch. Absolutely. They don't typically really enjoy it and we like to let them be koalas. They're not pets. Um, they live here. This is their home. So we like to respect their space as much as possible. Um, but they're super good about this being picked up and moved, but we don't actually hold them or cuddle them or anything like that. So Absolutely. I will show you and we'll, we'll move Lottie to the outdoor habitat where she'll spend the rest of the day. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and watch Alexa as she scoops up Lottie. A lot of you have been asking, are they cuddlers? Do they like to be held? It's something that they're definitely used to, familiar with as our keepers move them around, um, but it's definitely not a cuddly wuddly thing that we do just for fun. It's a part of their care to move them from place to place. So right here, I have both of our little hands in mine, um, just that so she's stable, and then I also kind yeah. of crook my arm so it's like a tree. That makes so sense. She's a little bit more comfortable. So we'll go ahead and walk her on. Perfect. Out. She's very good at that. She does this <laughs> most days. Now, Lottie has lived here almost her entire life. Those of you who are familiar with Lottie, you've seen a lot of her joeys here at the zoo. In fact, Alexa, correct me if I'm wrong. How many joeys has she had? I believe she's had 11. I thought, I thought that. Charlotte. I was going to say, I thought it was right around that number here. We're going to go ahead and swing around. That way we can see a little bit better. Alexa's still carrying Ms. Lottie on over. Getting her all the way in here at Habitat, right next to her favorite bushel. You might hear her grunts a little bit. That's typical of her in the morning, just like a lot of older <laughs> folks, myself included. I tend to be a little grouchy in the morning right? um, and a little stiff. So she might be just getting her placing here. Gotta have to warm up a little bit, stretch <laughs> out. 
Now, koalas sleep a whole lot all throughout the day. Oh, there's one of those little grunts. <laughs> and a lot of people ask, do they ever make noises? Koalas can be extremely loud when they want to be. In fact, they almost kind of have a roaring sound, don't they? They do. They, when I heard it for the first time, I was never expecting koalas to sound <laughs> that way. You think that because they're so cute that they would have like a really sweet, cheerful, chippery kind sure. of voice. But they definitely have a very um, deep, grunting, powerful, powerful voice <laughs> yes. that's kind of alarming when you first hear it. Um, it's pretty spectacular, actually. Oh, Lottie, you are so sweet. You're checking out the day. <laughs> Oh, another quick question that we just came, came in from Jessica. They were wondering, how much do they typically weigh? Let's see. So Lottie weighs about five kilograms. So she's about 12 pounds or so. Okay, sure. Um, oh, good girl. Look at her. She's <laughs> diving right in. <laughs> um, and then Cody is about, let's see, he's about almost seven kilograms. So okay. he's more about 15 pounds or yep. so. So males are typically a bit bigger than our females. Um, and Cody's a, a much younger individual, too, than Lottie, um, so he's kind of more robust, I will I'll say, a little bit more full out. <laughs> <laughs> but this is Lottie's favorite bushel. Am I remembering that yes, correctly? Yes, this okay. is her Propinqua. It's one of her absolute favorites. Um, whenever we have it, we do like to make sure that she gets it because we know it's her favorite and she eats it really, really well. So by the end of the day or by tomorrow morning when we do come in, in and check on all of her bushels to make sure how much she ate, these yeah. will be all the way down to the stocks. Oh, um, we do get asked quite a bit if they eat the whole thing. Yeah. They typically do not eat the whole bushel. They usually really love, you can see all of these really pretty purple flowers. I was going to say all those things. bright colors, yeah. All of those new growths, that's what they typically like to eat. Sure. Um, the bigger, larger plants at the bottom of the stalks tend to have a little bit more of the toxicity that eucalyptus mm. holds, and they mm -hmm. just don't find it as tasty. So they will eat them occasionally, but they typically really love that really nice new um, that fresh new growth. growth, the little leaves, those are the ones that they're preferring. Now, Alexa just made a really, really good point. Eucalyptus is toxic. Mm -hmm. Pretty much no other animals eat it. <laughs> they do not have a digestive system that can take it. It makes them very ill, very sick. So we're not recommending y'all eat your eucalyptus at home. You're no koala. <laughs> nope, only the koalas eat eucalyptus. No other species do. Exactly. Oh, Ella, I just saw your comment too. Because a lot of people are wondering, those big, huge ears, do they have good hearing? You guessed it, of course they do. <laughs> that is one of their best adaptations or their best sense, I should say. Alexa, they don't have that great of eyesight, is that correct? I don't believe that they do. I'm not 100% um, <laughs> uh, sure about that, but sure. from what I understand, it's not as good as their hearing, and then no, their smell mm. is really good. So they have those really, really big noses that you guys can see on her there, and so you can actually see her sniffing around. So she's smelling for the good eucalyptus. So she knows exactly what she's looking for. So they have a really fairly powerful sense of smell. That is so neat to think of. So instead of sniffing her way through, say like our grizzly bears do, ooh, big shake this morning. <laughs> She's actually sniffing every single leaf, kind of checking to see which one she prefers, which one she's more interested in dining on. Now, her day is going to pretty much consist of making her way around, munching on some eucalyptus, and then a whole lot of napping. In fact, they've been known to sleep upwards of 20 hours a day. <laughs> it is a whole lot. They are big sleepers. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that it takes a lot of energy to digest that eucalyptus. So a lot of their metabolism is being used to digest sleep but also since they hang out up in the trees they don't really have to worry about predators nearly as much mm -hmm. so they kind of have a relaxed lifestyle they're not lazy i wouldn't say lazy nope it just takes a lot of energy to digest that food like you said um so she'll spend her whole day out here and then towards the end of the day we'll go ahead and bring her inside that's just for her safety we want to make sure that no one you know we have native animals in the area no one's coming into her habitat or messing with her or anything like that absolutely um the temperatures do drop at night too so we like to make sure that they um they stay in warm climates. Sure, absolutely. Now of our three individuals, I'm seeing a lot of questions about Cody and our joeys. Right now we currently don't have any joeys. Um, Lottie actually has been our most prolific female, actually our only breeding female here for a number of years. Um, but once again, in honor of Mother's Day, she is <laughs> retired. <laughs> she is focused on just enjoying life as is. Her last offspring, her last joey is Charlotte. And Charlotte actually still lives here at Riverbanks. And that's actually why Cody arrived. Those of you who tuned into Cody's feature on Z Learning, you know that Cody came to us actually from Ohio to specifically be paired with Charlotte. So no Joey's quite yet. 
No nope. breeding as of yet. They haven't even met, I'm assuming. They haven't. So we typically, um, for any of you guys that are curious how the breeding process works here, we typically wait for them to tell us that they are ready. So we talked a little bit about those vocalizations. Now, when Charlotte is ready for Cody and Cody is ready for Charlotte, we will hear lots of vocalizations between the <laughs> two. Um, and we do monitor it very closely um, and make sure that it's all good to go and that everyone's looking good. Um, Charlotte has not seemed that interested in Cody just yet. She's still fairly young, so she's almost three. Um, so we're hoping that pretty soon we'll start hearing some more of those vocalizations from her. Uh, Lottie, on the other hand, is very interested in Cody. However, <laughs> she is officially retired because she is a little older and she did have a, a harder time um, carrying Charlotte around. She's Absolutely, officially yeah. retired from breeding. Um, and she just gets to live out her life here at Riverbanks and um, be a happy koala. Well, and that's such a great example, too, of our quality care. Because we talk about all about this high-quality care. We provide all of our 2,000-plus animal residents. But what I really want to explain to all of you, especially while we're focusing on Lottie here, it's individualized. It's not just generic for all the koalas. It's based on personalities, their own personal health and history. And for Lottie's well-being, she gets to kind of enjoy life on her own. And we get questions a lot, too, of why aren't the koalas hanging out together? Well, typically, koalas are a pretty solitary animal. Other than mothers hanging out with their joeys for, gosh, only a year or two. That'd be about it. Yeah, Charlotte, um, because Lottie, um, Charlotte was very clingy um, and wanted to be on her mom all the time. And as you can see, Lottie's a little stiff moving around. So she had a, a really hard time moving around with Charlotte. So we did oh. pull... Um, Charlotte a little earlier, but just about that year time. But that's typically when uh, Joey's would leave their mothers. Sure. Yep. And um, so we went ahead and did that. And, and they did great. Um, you know, it's not a stressful situation. It's what they would do in the wild. Yep. We do get asked a lot, why aren't they together? They are solitary. You know, they don't typically hang out unless, you know, it's a mom and a Joey or it's breeding. Sure, absolutely. Now we're going to let Lottie kind of continue her routine. Mm -hmm. We'll give a little quick peek one more time at Lottie before we head on out. Those of you who are wondering, Lottie is our 18 year old individual. Let me go ahead and turn around this camera though quick. We're actually going to head back on into the koala barn. Let's go ahead and say good morning to our other koalas. Just real quick, Alexa. I know that we're not going to bring a snack for them. Lottie got all the attention. Of course the other koalas will be fed. Don't worry about them. But for the sake of time and Z learning, we're going to let Alexa go ahead and shut the door behind us. And we're actually going to take a quick peek. I know a lot of you have been all caps wondering where is cody they want to see cody well here is cody he's right behind our mesh here this morning let's see if we can zoom in a little bit there he is you can open the door so you can get a better look at him oh there he is he's starting to wake up we're just going to do a quick peek we don't want to throw off his routine but this is one of our behind the scenes bedrooms good morning cody those of you who've been tuning into z learning you know this good looking guy Oh, we definitely just woke him up, Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> he's all right. So the reason why he's back there, which we do get asked where our koalas go when you guys can't see them, we do have these back spaces for them. Um, and he was actually outside where Lottie was yesterday. So he came in last night to these dens. And then once um, I get his food ready, he's going to go out onto the habitat that Lottie was on. Perfect. So it's just a big ring around the rosy with our koalas. <laughs> ring around the rosy, a big shuffle. I love it. Because if we actually look over here, Exhibit two was where Ms. Lottie was this morning. And then next door to her is exhibit one where Charlotte actually is hanging out. And once again, we'll just kind of do a, just a quick brief peek. Cause like I said, Alexa actually takes care of a whole lot of animals here at the zoo, a lot of different mammals. Oh, good morning. Look at this character. Now you all can say that you saw all three of our koalas this morning. So Charlotte is our youngest individual. She is? She is almost three. She'll be three, three years in old. July, Thank you. I believe. Oh, look it's at that face. It's always kind of hard to figure out what their exact age is, but they typically come out of the pouch around seven months. So it's usually always a guesstimate because they're born the size of jelly beans. And then they make their way up to their mom's pouch and they stay there for about seven months and then they emerge. So it's really a guess, but we saw her coming out of the pouch um, not too long after I started in Cat Bear. And so we estimate her birthday to be in July. That is so interesting to think of. A lot of times when you think of animal births, you think of these big grand kind of entrances into the world. Not that koalas are any less grand, but being the size of a jelly bean, it's very hard to notice and they're very secretive about it. But after the birth and that individual, that little jelly bean baby <laughs> will actually crawl into mom's pouch and then hang out in there, latch onto a teat and stay in that pouch for a good bit of time. So getting their exact birthdays are a little bit more of an estimation than anything. <laughs> 
but of course we still celebrate their birthdays regardless. <laughs> Absolutely. We love to celebrate birthdays here. <laughs> and then actually she's in a really good spot. You can see just about how much they do eat. Now Charlotte is our younger girl, so she is a fantastic eater. Look at um, that. So you can see that she's sort of stripped all of that new growth down. So that's typically what our bundles look like in the morning. What a good point. It's looking a little spare. Little bear. Yep, little bear <laughs> that's been out for a whole day. So part of Alexa's routine now is going to be, of course, we fed Lottie. Then it's going to be removing all of this old eucalyptus. So we'll go ahead and compost that. And then bringing out the new eucalyptus and kind of rotating out our koalas too. Now I want to go ahead and turn around our camera real quick and give a big thank you to Alexa. Thanks, Thanks for, for joining, joining us, us this morning. You did a fantastic <laughs> job. We could not have done it without you. Thank you. Thank oh, you. My pleasure. <laughs> now what I wanted to go ahead and do is a quick little wrap up because we're going to hang out here inside of Koala is I wanted to remind all of you once again who tuned in maybe a little later today I wanted to wear our South Carolina Strong shirt because we just recently got youth sizes in this awesome shirt. So head on over to our online gift shop. We'll provide a link here in the caption. Otherwise, just head to riverbanks.org. It's on the main landing page. South Carolina Strong now comes in youth sizes for all you kiddos that are tuning into Z Learning. Now, tomorrow for Z Learning, join us at 10 a.m. We're going to be getting a very close look at some of our much smaller residents. We're gonna be hanging out with our leaf-tailed geckos and checking out some of our even our itty bitty new additions over in the aquarium and reptile complex. So until tomorrow, we'll see you for Z Learning Tuesday morning. Thanks so much everybody and we'll see you then.